I would like to ask you first of, um, when we talk about workers' rights at European level, what is the state of the art and um, what are the main things that you think we should fight for? We have invited here to Bremen different kinds of workers from different sectors, from the tech sector, from the aviation sector, from the delivery sector, from the logistics sector. Some are working here in Bremen and around Bremen for uh, Amazon. And what the European Union has to really address is that all these workers are on the one hand facing massive repression when it comes to unionizing. When people start to fight for their rights, the European Union should protect these workers in the attempts they have to claim their rights and to organize each other in their, at their workplaces. We have the next EU elections uh, in the spring of 2024. What can we do and what can we realistically expect between now and the next EU elections to happen? And on what specific um, actions should we hold accountable the future MEPs of the new legislature and the candidates uh, for the new legislature? So when it comes to the European elections, I think one of the major things is that we have to create conditions for workers be it from Ukraine, be it from African countries or from Middle Eastern countries, which are not racist, which are not uh, creating any kind of new divisions which already exist way too much. So this is something what we should hold MPs very much accountable to. The other thing is that I believe that um, the European Union has to include workers in the debate around climate change. These people have amazing proposals on how these things should be changed. For me, this is very much connected to the discourse of we want to make the European Union a social union and not just an economical union. And that's where we're stuck at, right? At the moment, we have an economical union. Um, so how do you think that using certain um, instruments of direct and participative democracy such as uh, popular assemblies, which is uh, what we've done. Um, how does the use of such uh, instruments can help us make a European Union that is based on common social grounds and not just economical grounds? I think first we have to admit in Europe that there is just an inequality of powers. We could also call it the political inequality just of governments and corporations on the one side and of people and workers on the other side. So popular assemblies are a very crucial factor when it comes to empowering citizens on the ground. It allows people to have an understanding of politics which is not very much reflected in what people very often see as politics. Because people very often see politics as some kind of a business which might be very dirty also where you should not get involved in and that there is people even from the working class who are allowed to be part of this political system right and but this they can is feel not legitimate self. basically yeah. and this is not self-evident to people mm. who are poor who are disenfranchised who are economically uh, treated in unequal ways, who face this kind of feelings of powerlessness. So popular assemblies are a crucial yeah, point when it comes to um, changing this mechanism of disempowerment to an empowering politics which allows people to have a say. If people organize throughout the processes of popular assemblies, or if people even run for offices, people can make these experiences of hope, of courage, and of joy that we can change things together.